Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tibbet for Thursday, the 2nd of August, and uh, in the Atlantic, all is quiet everywhere except for right here east of the Antilles Islands where we have Tropical Depression 5, which was uh, classified yesterday, has not been named Ernesto yet, does not have the associated winds for that, uh, but it is a Tropical Depression now with a well-defined circulation evident here that we will zoom in on, and uh, we can see that convection kind of over the center, kind of not. The northern side is still a little bit of ex a little bit exposed, a little bit dry. You can see these cirrus clouds blowing away to the west, uh, to the north of the system. Uh, these are indicating the wind shear from this upper level trough that is existing over here in the central Atlantic, and this is pressing downward uh, from the north and is blowing some of these thunderstorms off to the south and to the east, and this is going to be making life difficult for the system. You can see right here there's a little bit of an anticyclonic uh, curvature to the cirrus flow here indicating that right here just to the east of the islands is a little bit uh, more relaxed and uh, TD5 may find a slightly more favorable region uh, in terms of wind shear right east of the islands as it moves westward today but this wind shear is not going away entirely and will be a problem uh, for a while as this upper level trough expands to the westward following the system over the next few days and will make life difficult for it. And now, as far as uh, the islands are concerned, this is not going to be any more than a fairly blustery day. Don't expect more than minimal t tropical storm conditions from this. Uh, it will be bringing rain on through. Can't wait to get a look at it for the, from the new Barbados radar if it's still working in here as it goes past. It will be nearing that soon. And uh, you can see it's still drifting with a northerly component to the movement here. That should change over the course of today and tonight. Uh, notice right now, uh, there's been a weakness with this upper low in the ridge over the central Atlantic has been allowing this to gain some latitude. Uh, this should turn uh, off towards nearly the due west of, or just north of west later on today uh, because we have ridging to the west of the weakness and there's a strong flow out of the east uh, coming into the eastern Caribbean as the trade winds re-strengthen here and uh, this is now moving at a good clip west northwest at 21 miles per hour uh, which indicates that it's in strong steering currents and it's going to turn off to the west here. This is also bad news for it uh, in the sense that when tropical cyclones move really fast, it means they're embedded in a fast flow, and as we've talked about, these fast trade winds disrupt uh, the circulation's ability to hold itself together, uh, to allow air to pile up around it and generate those thunderstorms, and uh, it can cause problems for these systems, uh, especially when they come into the Eastern Caribbean, when this is climatologically a region where the trade winds increase as you go westward, and this uh, causes the air to actually diverge, spread apart of the surface, which actually increases the sinking air, and you can even see that here, how dry it is out in front of the system is going to be causing problems for it. And now as it comes into the Caribbean, um, it's pretty much done in the sense that it's not going to strengthen for a long while. As it comes through here, do not expect anything significant to happen with this at all. I would not even be surprised if it degenerated into an open wave for uh, at some point. It may hold itself together, but it's not going to strengthen very much as it comes through the eastern and central Caribbean. The Hurricane Center does forecast moderate strengthening. Uh, we will see how that works, but once it gets to Jamaica's longitude, things may change a bit. I want to show you uh, the water vapor imagery here. Uh, here's the upper low I was talking about that was harder to see in the other image. You can see it easily in the water vapor, which shows us upper features fairly well. And you can see the wind shear coming across on the northern side of uh, Tropical Depression 5. Uh, notice here that we have another upper trough in the Western Caribbean. And uh, these two features are going to be very important over the next uh, actually week to 10 days even because these two features are not going anywhere anytime soon. This particular low is going to be expanding westward a little bit uh, to the north of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico over the next uh, couple of days, actually the next week or so, and it's going to be increasing the wind shear over the eastern and central Caribbean, again causing problems for TD5 until it gets uh, past 75 west or so. Um, but at the same time, this uh, trough right here is going to be lingering, and as soon as uh, TD5 gets past Hispaniola into the Jamaica region, what we're going to have is a setup where this is going to want to split away and start moving towards the southwest. Uh, here's the GFS ensemble mean upper level winds at 250 millibars by day five. Notice what we have here. We have uh, the trough over the central Atlantic that is backed west where TD5 right now on the GFS is somewhere near Jamaica or south of. Notice that we have this trough that was in the northwest Caribbean on the water vapor we just saw is now backed into the southwest Gulf of Mexico. So now we have the tut over here 
an upper low over here, and now guess what's going to try to happen? This low tries to back southwest in the face of an oncoming tropical system, and this is a big setup uh, that we often talk about. If you have an upper low backing away to the southwest out ahead of a tropical wave or some kind of tropical entity, it's usually very favorable because it means upper level ridging can start expanding in the wake of the upper level low and can uh, lower wind shear, allow upper divergence to develop and pressures to lower and uh, make the environment much more conducive for whatever a tropical entity is moving in there. And the fact that this trough is staying here, this is backing away, means that we're probably going to have upper level ridging bubbling up and expanding over the Western Caribbean and uh, the Southern Gulf of Mexico uh, as time goes on. And if we go out to day nine, uh, look that it indeed happens and the upper level ridge moves into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, producing a fairly favorable environment, in fact, uh, very favorable according to the GFS specifically, and it has been uh, consistent on that for the last couple of days. And uh, this pattern overall uh, looks like it's going to become better uh, for TD5 once it gets west of Jamaica's longitude, at which point if it's still alive enough, it may start developing over here in the Northwest Caribbean with time. You can see the models all take it into this region here, and it starts curving northwest, and this is another important thing because you notice that it races off to the west here uh, in the beginning of its life, and again, shouldn't do much before Jamaica, but after it passes Jamaica, notice that the models start taking it northwest. This is indicative that the high, high level pressure system uh, to the north of the Caribbean, the Marina High here, is strong and uh, in inducing strong trade winds on its southern side as uh, the storm begins its journey through the Caribbean. But once it curves northwest, it means that we're reaching the southwestern periphery of this high. And the southwestern periphery of the highs are better for surface convergence as the wind flow generally has to slow down as it starts curving poleward. So that is another factor that indicates that this could be a classic Caribbean setup where it's, uh, it struggles in the eastern part and then it gets to Jamaica and starts winding up more in the northwest Caribbean. And that's what some of the models have been showing lately is a re-strengthening once it gets uh, towards the west and I agree uh, entirely with uh, that scenario. Now regarding the track uh, we do notice this northwest turn here and in the long range uh, this is the big question for folks is whether this is going to be a problem for Central America, Cuba, or the Gulf states here in the extreme long range and uh, Right now, uh, there, it's hard to uh, get into the specifics, but in general, uh, we're talking about a pattern that's going to be coming more favorable in the Northwest Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico with time, means that everyone in here should be keeping a close eye on this system, because right now we're basically treating it like it's still a disturbance in the sense that it's not going to be very strong. The fact that it's de a depression just means that it's very well organized. Uh, this is just uh, going to be sneaking through here very weakly and then becoming a problem later, possibly, if it survives long enough and does not dissipate fully by the time it gets into a more favorable pattern. The question is where it will go and whether it will actually turn towards the United States with time or whether it hits uh, right into Central America. Either is possible, but let's look at a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to take you to the Western Pacific where we have uh, two typhoons, this one coming into China and then Saola uh, moving uh, through Taiwan and also coming into China right now bringing lots of heavy rains there. Uh, but these are not the last two typhoons we're going to have out that way. We have another one that's going to be developing here and another one here uh, over the next several days that all the models agree on and we have a very active Western Pacific right now. Now all these typhoons so far have been trapped under upper level, upper level ridging uh, north to the north over Japan and so all these typhoons have been bottled up bottled up in here. But watch what happens as we go to the GFS Ensemble mean 500 millibar day 10. Notice that we have a lot of below level heights uh, over uh, Japan and south of. These are actually all the typhoons in here, which you can kind of see as these red circles on the spaghetti plot on the right. These are all the typhoons on the GFS recurving now. And uh, they're starting to recurve to the north into Japan over here. And this is interesting because now it's drawing this trough down and providing a lot of amplif amplification over southeastern Asia. And uh, the significance of this is when you get a lot of these typhoons, they can cause ripples in the pattern that move downstream. And they're kind of like ripples in a pond. They start out strong, and the farther out you go, the weaker they get. Notice that we have uh, a, tr a strong trough here. This is like a ripple. And then this promotes amplification, strengthens this ridge, which in turn strengthens this trough 
over the Gulf of Alaska. Notice that the second trough isn't quite as strong as the first one. This in turn strengthens the ridge that has been so prominent over the central US this summer and moves it towards the west over the Rockies. And then the third ripple, which is weaker still, is this trough over the eastern United States. And it may be a weaker ripple, uh, but it is a trough uh, that results from this amplification of the pattern and ends up weakening the ridge over the Gulf of Mexico in here, which opens the door for anything coming out of the Caribbean to curve into the Gulf of Mexico and uh, moves this ridge far enough west that even Texas is open to a hit here in this type of a pattern. And you notice on the, sp on the spaghetti plot, all the red circles here are closed off height lines from ensemble members showing the storm. Uh, this is a TD5 here that ends up in the Gulf as a strengthening hurricane in all these red circles. Uh, so the GFS at least is showing this idea that the amplifi amplification of the pattern because of the typhoons right now in the western Pacific could result in something that allows the trough over the eastern US uh, to allow recurvature of our system. And the European actually shows the same thing. Day 10, uh, ensemble mean 500 millibar. Notice the amplification of the trough over Japan, the one over the Gulf of Alaska, and the number three over the eastern seaboard with a weakness in the ridge. And uh, the European in general has the system in the southwestern Gulf at this time, allowing it to come somewhat farther north. So this is something we're going to have to watch in the long range, still way too far out for specifics at this time. Uh, but the pattern is there to allow something like this to happen. And Central America and the Gulf of Mexico should be keeping an eye, a wary eye on this situation for now. It's not a not an immediate concern, but something that could become a problem in the long range. The Antilles Islands, again, will get minimal tropical storm conditions from this uh, during the next couple of days. In a day or so, Barbados will start to get battered by this. Not really a big deal. This will be coming through the Caribbean. Not an issue until it gets west of Jamaica, I think. And then in the Northwest Caribbean, this could start ramping up into a stronger system. Could run into the Yucatan. Uh, that's certainly a possibility. Could even curve up into Western Cuba. Again, specifics are hard more than five days out. Uh, but the general idea is that this should come west and then start curving northwest a little bit and end up in this region uh, in seven to ten days and could be a bigger issue then than it is now. So we will have to keep a very close eye on this as time goes on. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.